Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Wood, folks, as we do every Tuesday and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, you can reach Tim every trading day at Ord, O-R-D, hyphen, oracle.com. That's Ord, hyphen, oracle.com. Tim Wood, what's going on, brother? Well, there's not a lot going on here. Um, let's take a look at chart one. Okay. Uh, this is uh, the SPYs. And we talked about it, I think, last Thursday, uh, kind of updated this chart, kind of shows you where we are. I don't think anything serious is going on as far as the top is concerned. I know it's, uh, the VIX is kind of going up here. But anyhow, on the chart, I listed the uh, trend closes over the last um, uh, approximately about a month or so. And trend closes above 1.2 show panic. And panic only forms at bottoms. So all those uh, blue trend readings above 1.2, so if the market does pull back, chances are you're going to see the trend jump up again. And when the trend, trend jumps up again above 1.2, that's the support area. Okay. Because now you're having panic. Panic only forms the bottoms. So if the market's going down, it's not panic, and, you know, you're going into abyss. So you want panic. Yes. So, uh, so anyhow, it's... it's you got quite a bit of support right below us where we are. The market's kind of dead here. Uh, also, I got going into last Wednesday, and this is on the volume chart. Yeah. Uh, we were up uh, seven days in a row. Right. And uh, that if you get that moment, much momentum going up, that just doesn't <laughs> shut off. Normally, you get seven days up. Normally, it's actually taking a little bit longer now. It's, it's that I used to say five days. The market will be higher five days, like, 80% of the time, it's starting to be like six or seven days now. So it's a little bit of a change, but it's still going to make a higher highs at some point, probably within the next week. So could a little bit of a rally starting today, maybe. Um, um, it's kind of hard to say here. I think the downside, again, since we had panic in that 535 range on the SPYs, that area is going to act as support. There's also a gap right there. Uh, we may yes. test that gap again. Don't know, uh, but uh, and of course coming up, you know, coming ahead, up, sorry. Uh, well, coming up to the July Fourth holiday, I mean, people like buying stocks for some reason. Well, I can picture why. Let's go America on July Fourth, right? I mean, is it yeah. you know that is normally a bullish time, you know? So yeah, I can see how that yeah. shakes out. Yeah. Yeah, July Fourth. Uh, usually, there's a rally starts around that July Fourth time frame. So it may not be this week, but uh, July 4th is next Thursday, I think it is. Yes. And so probably, you know, late this week, maybe early next week, I think a rally will start and we'll probably hit new highs. Uh, and one of the reasons why is that seven days up in a row last Wednesday. So right. there's another new high coming and, and how high, high, don't know. Um, just flip to chart two. Okay. Uh, this is kind of a little warning sign. But this is uh, the weekly, uh, just the SPY, and I just put a Bollinger Band on it. And for some reason, uh, actually, uh, when the market gets too exuberant, this kind of this is on the weekly time frame. So also, it's more important on the monthly time frame. But the weekly time frame also seems to uh, work pretty good. But when the market gets too exuberant and it goes up too fast from the norm. Because uh, it's basically the Bollinger Bands, just a 20-day moving average, and the upper and lower Bollinger Bands are two standard deviations from that 20-day average. I see. So okay. It gets, yeah, so it gets too far away from that 20-day average, and there's two deviations away. It runs into the upper Bollinger Band, and I circled the times in the past where that happened. And uh, normally, if you get 50% above the upper Bollinger Band, the next week is usually a down week. We're not quite doing that. The last time we got above the mid Bollinger Band, but not 50%, was basically December there of 2023. I got yes. in blue there. Yes, I see that. Kind of, yeah, I kind of ran into the Bollinger Band and and it, and it kind of took the performance out, and the market kind of not stalled, but it didn't really decline. But it kind of took some of the energy out of the market. We got something similar going on right now. So even though I think we see new highs, maybe, and that'd be about it. And I think, you know, after July 4th time frame, seasonality is actually bullish 
going into July 4th until two weeks after July 4th that it <laughs> runs out. That's so funny and you said uh, two weeks. That blows my mind. You know why, Tim? Do you remember? It was July 18th of 1998 that that vicious downdraft started, man. <laughs> oh, that's, that's right. That's right. That is Jeez. crazy. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if we'll get the downdraft here. Oh no, no, no! Um, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. That was a vicious. I'm yeah. not saying that. But that just when I just put that together, I was like, oh my god, I can't because I'll never forget. I mean, that was just a yeah. Anyway, that's wild, man. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. That were we on the radio then, and that's when that downdraft yes. happened. Yes. Yeah. No. That and yeah, uh, the ticks exactly. were exploding, and yeah. I think yeah. I got to get off the phone because I got to buy some calls. Well, no, that was, that was no the, the 18th. July 18th was the beginning of it. Okay. And then we rode that down. That the call that you made then that was in. I think the first one was August fifteenth, uh, and then September. Do you know what I'm saying? That that's that's when you bought the calls because we had to go down for like six weeks straight. It was like a razor blade. And then, oh. yeah, when you that, that. But what you said, there's no doubt. That's exactly what happened. That like, I gotta get off the. And then we were all live, folks. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was fun. So, but anyhow, so we got that. So I'm still. I think in mid July, late July, I, I think you may see some weakness. So right now, I, I think we're fine. Okay. Um, let's see chart three. What well, we got in chart three? Uh, I okay, have the S and P fifty percent kind of above. You to see it really a little bit better. Kind of see where we are. You know, December of last year, we kind of stalled a little bit. So the week of January, the first week of January, was down. So, you know, it's just a blown up view. You can kind of see what's going on. Yes. But if you get 50% above the mid Bollinger Band, open, close, in other words, then that's the time, a lot of times you get reversals that are worthwhile. And, if, you know, the October of 2023, you got more than 50% of that Bollinger Band below it. So that was the bottom. So cool. I hear the music. Yep. Stay right there, folks. Tim and I come right back. We have the Dow Industrials down 279, NASDAQ's up 228, S&P's up 18 and a half. Tim and I come right back, folks. Welcome back, folks. Tim or Tom O'Brien, we do appreciate the growl and a problem with us out here. Uh, so, Tim, I have the third chart up here. Yeah, let's go to chart four. Okay. I have it. And, uh, okay, it's, we kind of looked at this chart before, and this basically tells you the health of the, um, of the uh, market, basically. It's, so wh what it, the second window down from the top is a bullish percent index for the gold miners index, and I think you looked it up, and it's like 30 stocks in that index. Yes. So not a lot, but of those stocks in that index, 78% of those, uh, of those stocks in that index on point and figure buy signals. Okay. So that what what I'm trying to say is that's a strong situation. Yes. And you like to see it stay above sixty, actually preferably between sixty to ninety five. It gets past ninety five and there's too much bullishness I guess going on a lot of times that comes at tops. But we're in an ideal area. If we can stay in this area, which I, I bet we will uh, then, in general, this rally continues. So the green areas on the chart show the times when this um, bullish percent index is above 60%, and the pink areas are when it's below 60%. And a lot of times when it's below 60%, that's where you get declines. But right now, uh, we're kind of just holding here. We showed this chart last week. It's pretty much the same place where it was. So 78% of the stocks in the uh, gold miners index are a buy signal. Nice. So okay. That's a good showing. So that's a healthy market. Let's go to chart five. Okay. And this is so that we we know about approximately eighty percent of the stocks are on buy signals now. This measures the up down volume advanced plan indicators on the uh, GDX uh, ETF, I guess. Yes. So it measures the strength of what how many stocks are advancing and how much up volume compared to down volume. So anyhow, all the blue area when the, are, uh, let's see, this is a, okay, I got too many things going on in my head here, but anyhow, let's go. <laughs> the bottom window is the 50-day uh, average of the up-down volume. Okay. And anything above zero is bullish. So uh, the next higher window is the 50-day average of the up-down volume Anything above uh, zero is bullish. And so the blue 
area across the chart shows the times when both those indicators are above zero. Right. So, uh, so right now we get a buy signal here back. Uh, it looks like April, first of April, sort of. And so far, uh, it remains above uh, April. So the advances and decline is is steadily going, holding positive, and as long as up volume and compared to down volume is holding positive. So right now, on a 50-day average, this indicator is still on a bicycle. If you notice, we pulled back a little bit, and I got a neckline drawn on the GDX chart, which is the top chart. Yes. And I think this whole pattern is a head and shoulders bottom, where the October of 2022 was the head, then we completed the right shoulder, and we popped above the neckline here uh, over the last month or two, wherever it is. We're right now back on that neckline. We're sitting right on it. And so far, the up-down volume and advanced client indicators are remaining above zero. So if the market's going to support itself, it should do right around the neckline. And I think we're probably doing that. So there's nothing really bearish here uh, unless the market falls below the neckline and both those two indicators fall below zero. Then, then you got something else going on, and I don't think that's probably what's going to happen. All right, we are getting because close, though, right? I mean, I'm looking at the. It looks like the. You know, if we look at the, the bottom box. I mean, we made it up to what a plus twenty, and now we're like at five, right? And then yeah, five. Yeah, and then this thing right, and then the market's pulled back for a couple of weeks too. Oh, so I know. yes, right, 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 right. Cool. So what you don't want to do is see a bunch of weakness on the advanced decline and up down volume here, and you're not really doing that. It's kind of uh, falling back, and the market has consolidated. So let's flip two charts to six. Okay. Okay, this, so that was a moving average up-down volume. This is a cumulative uh, up-down volume. Uh, actually, the bottom window is the uh, GDX-GLD ratio. Yes. And you like to see it above mid-Bollinger Band. And so far, it's trending above mid-Bollinger Band. But the ones I'm really watching here, this is a weekly chart, and, and it's a cumulative a second window up from the bottom is the cumulative advanced decline and up for GDX. The next window higher is the cumulative up-down volume. So it's a little bit different. We're not doing a moving average. We're doing cumulative. Okay. So it's, it's, a, it's a different picture yes. of what the market's doing. So this, is, this chart actually can go uh, down when the S&Ps are going up. And that's a really a bad sign. And also, can... The S and P is going to actually go down, and this chart goes up, and that's exactly what's happening right now. Uh, you can't, if you look over the last two weeks, basically mid, I think mid May was a high in GDX, and it's pulled back down uh, so far. So, it's, uh, so for about a month, GDX has has been consolidating, and if you look at the uh, second window up from the bottom, this indicator has actually gone sideways. It's not even gone down; it's gone sideways. Uh, for the advanced decline. So cumulatively, it's actually showing strength because the, the GDX has consolidated, pulled back from eyeballing it here. It looks like about 37 to 33. Right. The, the advanced decline has not pulled back at all. And up-down volume virtually has not declined at all. To me, that's strength. That's pretty cool. That's no, no, I'm is. with you. I, I get that for sure. Particularly because... What happens, folks, on this type of thing? That, you know, you can say, yeah, the GDX is pulled back, but when you get the up-down volume, inside of that, that is saying that, as Tim just says, there's strength in there because, uh, you know, the bottom line is that even though we'll pull back, you still have a lot of buyers in there, man, cumulatively coming up. Yeah, cool, man. Okay. Yeah, so so you're not weakening here, as, as my uh, trying to point. You know, a lot of people are kind of nervous in here. And you know, I'm seeing strength, so I'm thinking the neckline – to get a sell signal on this weekly indicator, you need a, a, uh, this indicator to fall below the mid Bollinger Band, and uh, we're not doing that at all. We're all, almost running into the upper Bollinger Band here. We're a little bit well, we did earlier, but uh, so you know, we're a long way from the mid Bollinger Band. The mid Bollinger Band is turned up, and that's a good sign. So if you watch the mid Bollinger Band, uh, if you go back to um, say be May of 2023, you got a sell, you see that red dot? Yes, line? I do. Yep. Okay, it fell through mid Bollinger, pretty much right at the top there. And it pretty much has been trending down 
until now. Now the Bollinger Band is just starting to turn up. Yeah, because it, so, it hit the the low of the Bollinger Band on, uh, what, five days ago? Yeah, right. Four, five, six. Six days ago, yeah. Well, eight days ago, I guess. It was riding it, and then it came. It's it's Right now, I, yeah. No, I, I see what you're saying, man, for sure. Yep. All right. So anyhow, so internal, in, internal. this is actually showing strength, this indicator. So let's flip to, um, this is a big indicator. This is a monthly chart. This is, a, I guess, the holy grail of what the bigger trend is doing. Yes. And as long as the monthly chart on the, uh, on the up-down volume, which is the bottom window, and the top window is the uh, you know, up-down volume, and the bottom window is up-down. As long as those two indicators stay above the mid-Bollinger band, the bigger trend is up. And that's what's, that's, that's what's going on right now. It's a beautiful thing. Tim Oyd, thank you so much, man. You have a great one, safe one. Of course, we look forward to speaking to you on Thursday. All right. See you then, man. Thank you, man. Lot. Love you. Bye-bye. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back. <laughs>